Hi, Mark Ostfeldt from ADM Investor Services International. With some thoughts on where we're going at the moment in terms of markets and perhaps uh, some little pointers from current uh, changes in trends in some indices uh, that but were worth bearing in mind because they might augur a slightly uh, more adverse scenario for markets. Uh, the focus is on the US, but I think this applies uh, more, more, more broadly uh, to most developed world markets. Uh, my first chart this week is uh, compares, uh, we've done this before, uh, the US Treasury Move Volatility Index versus the S&P 500 VIX Volatility Index. Um, there will be probably most people focusing on the VIX and how the VIX has fallen. It's not quite in the old range that we were, but we're certainly down at that sort of 25 level, uh, elevated by comparison with the past 10 years, but very low by comparison with the last three months. Um, however, the move treasury volatility index has started to tick up again, and we're seeing some divergence there, as one can see on the chart. And as we can see from previous episodes, Sometimes the move uh, preempts what is going to happen in the S&P 500 uh, volatility. And generally, when we're talking about more volatility, we're also talking um, a bit of a downdraft at some stage. Uh, we shall see. Uh, the next chart, um, I think, is also, well, the next two charts are worth bearing in mind. Uh, we know that the Federal Reserve is carrying on with all its various QE purchases, its Treasury purchases, are coming down a little, um, but nevertheless, it's uh, buying into a lot of other capital markets. So it's well worth uh, bearing in mind what's actually happening in terms of yield spreads internally within the Treasury market. Uh, the first chart is the 10 30 year spread. And as we can see, it's at the highs and it's certainly way above any sort of level that we've seen over the past year. Um, it's not exactly terrifying at 80 basis points. Um, but that's above the sort of 50 level that we've been averaged, 40 to 50 level that we've been averaging for quite some time. Some might argue uh, that this is due to increased uh, ex expectations that once we've got over the oil price shock, we'll probably see a bit of an uptick in inflation. However, if we look at my third chart today, which is the US 10-year break-even inflation chart, we can see that while it's recovered from the oil price shock, um, it's also um, not really ticked up to the sort of levels, unlike the 10, 30 year level, uh, spread um, <clears throat> that we were seeing beforehand. Therefore, it's implying that inflation will remain low for a very protracted period. Um, <clears throat> that's worth bearing in mind because it does suggest that despite the fact the central bank's best effort to remove all form of risk premia and therefore encourage uh, from um, asset prices and therefore encourage people to uh, chase um, uh, risk, so to speak. I would say it's chase returns is a better word. They're not actually chasing risk if the central banks are not allowing risk premium to be factored into markets. Um, but it implies a slightly bigger risk premium for uh, longer term investments. Uh, the third, and uh, well, the fourth and the fifth charts, I think, are also very much well worth bearing in mind. They play into much the same sort of uh, backdrop. What we've seen uh, in on this, what we see on this fourth chart, is a comparison of the investment grade average yield spread uh, over U.S. Treasuries, and as we can see, that's come back down to. Uh, the 150 type uh, plus 150 basis point type level, despite record volumes of in investment grade issuance. Indeed, we've got higher levels um, <clears throat> uh, already this year than we had for the whole of last year. Um, so uh, it's not being that sensitive to it. However, what one must say is corporate profits are falling, and this is only covers to court with the end of Q1. They're going to fall further. And to my final chart, do remember that we're actually starting to see a very sharp rise in total equity issuance in the US capital markets, um, <clears throat> uh, much higher volume of issuance in number of issues and in volume of overall size. And that's a trend which very much well is worth keeping a very close eye on. And those are the thoughts for this week. Mm -hmm.